So, hello everyone, I'm Charles Armstrong. I'm about to trip over and kill myself on the stage. Um, and I'm the, the founder of the Trampery, which is a shared workspace in London, in Shoreditch, in fact. How many of you have been to Shoreditch? Yes, <laughs> that's good. Um, so, if it's all right, I'd like to just tell you a bit of the story of the Trampery, how it came about, and I suppose why it makes me so excited about what's happening here in Oslo with MASH as well. Um, so a bit of background, I, I started off studying social and political science uh, at Cambridge. And am I right, You're, you did sociology as well? Yes, the rise of the sociologists, <laughs> we're here. Um, and then like any good sociologist, I went off to a little island to do research. And uh, the little island I chose was uh, called St. Agnes in the Isles of Scilly. Uh, which is just off the southwest tip of Britain. Uh, and on St. Agnes, there were 80 people and four cows uh, and about 300,000 seagulls. Um, and I spent a year there uh, really trying to understand the role that informal networks played in the way that decisions got made, uh, the way that people collaborated, the way that news got around. Uh, and in a lot of ways, the, the experiences I had during that year have shaped almost everything that I've done since, because there is something wonderful about tiny, tiny communities, uh, which is that almost, they've got the same dynamics as, as the whole global society, but everything is so clear and so visible in them. And it's also, it's given me a love for small, small societies as well. Um, so, Somewhat to my surprise, the, 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 the consequence of, uh, of having, having spent the year on St. Agnes was that I set up a software business, uh, which, which isn't what most well-behaved sociologists do at that point, actually. You're meant to write a thesis or something, I think. Um, and, uh, and, and really, having decided to, to set up a software business that would, would, would be about analyzing social patterns in uh, large, large uh, data sets of communication information, I went to Shoreditch, uh, and uh, kind of that's where the, the journey begins uh, for the Trampery. Um, and at that point, there weren't really any, uh, any, any tech startups in Shoreditch. There were lots of artists, there were fashion designers, uh, there were graphic designers, there were the kind of smoldering remains of, uh, of, of web designers after the dot-com crash, um, but, but no software businesses. But it, like, it felt like a place that was uh, seething with innovation and, and creativity, and it, it just felt like a very good place to try and do something new. So I, I don't really want to, to, to talk too much about the story of, uh, of trampoline, but if I fast forward a, a few, few years, um, about 2008, uh, it became clear that something was happening. Like When I set up trampoline in 2003, there were maybe five software businesses there. By 2008, there were maybe 100. And you just had to go outside the door and you'd be bumping into people who had just arrived who wanted to pitch their business to you. Like it, was, it was a very striking change. And there were no shared workspaces. And I, 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 I'd been in, in California and, and places where I'd, I'd kind of seen the, the, the beginnings of the co-working movement. Um, and I thought, well, actually, like, there's a, somebody needs to set one of these things up. Um, and I... The more I thought about it, the more it seemed that actually a lot of the assumptions behind the, the co-working spaces and the incubators and accelerators that I'd seen, they, they were actually a bit suspect and, and that there was an opportunity to do something that in a lot of ways was different than the, the conventional way. So I, I, if I just kind of touch on a few of the points where I thought that it needed, where, where there was the opportunity to do something differently. First of all, everybody who's, well, most people who are involved in policy or in, in, in venture support, they focus on a single startup or a single entrepreneur as the thing that you're working with. So you think, oh, yes, you get an entrepreneur, you get them together with their founding team, they're going to need a lawyer, they're an accountant, somebody who knows about marketing, oh, they're going to need some investment. You get all of these ingredients together, and oh, gosh, you're going to have a successful startup, aren't you? And like all of my experiences, told me that that was nonsense, and that actually successful startups are mostly about communities. They, 
they emerge from communities of strong relationships uh, where, where people are kind of striving for things together and they're based on friendship, like really echoing some of what, what you've heard already, like friendship is the most powerful force to grow businesses out of because it's durable, it survives, it su survives crises and, and trauma and so forth. So that, that was one point, like focus on the community, think about how you can use a workspace to cultivate uh, a community of entrepreneurs, not just separate successful startups. The second point was uh, really about whether, whether shared workspaces were just for startups, because that, that really remains the conventional wisdom. But actually, if you look at the kind of debates going on inside the largest corporations about how they use office spaces and the assumptions that underpin the kind of grim factories that they put most of their staff in, you start to realize that actually all of the, the philosophy and logic that goes behind a, a good shared workspace is as relevant to the employees of a giant corporation as it is to a startup. And so kind of that was another big filter that, that, that went away. Um, and finally, and, and perhaps most profoundly, when you think about incubators or shared workspaces, you tend to think about them as providing a service to the entrepreneurs and businesses that are inside them. Well, actually, it started to strike me that the, the real way to understand them is about the effect that they're having on the whole ecosystem that surrounds them, and that actually you can drop a well-organized shared workspace into uh, a city or into a national economy, and you can dramatically change the dynamics of that whole economy. And so you kind of turn the model inside out. And, and with the Trampery, we ended up um, describing that model as uh, an ecosystem. How am I doing for time? Oh, oh sorry. Okay, the, uh, I'm going to have to accelerate a bit, I think. Um, so anyway, we, we set up this place, and uh, very quickly, magical things started happening. We just found that like people that we just thought were wonderful started coming to us and they weren't just from one sector they 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 were they were doing art galleries or book publishing they were doing tech businesses they were doing fashion design um, but like one day we had a call from Buckingham Palace asking if the Duke of York could come and and, and visit and then maybe he could actually open a new place for us and um, we weren't expecting that. And then a month later, we, we had a call and, well, could the Prime Minister come to, to visit? And, and, and suddenly, like, the kind of energy that, that we weren't creating, but that everybody who had come into the space was creating, it had kind of created this gravity well that people I would never have imagined would want to come started to come, and they started to want to do projects with us. Uh, and, and some of those were on the art side, some of those were with big corporations, some of those were on the policy side. And it, it just kind of made me realize that a shared workspace and the community that forms in it is, is kind of one of the defining nexus points in, in a modern economy. It can touch everything. Um, and I suppose that another thing that, that, that really struck me, we never did any recruitment because like everybody who's joined the team, starting with Ben Pickering, who's in here somewhere, but where are you, Ben? There he is, there he is. Um, like they, they just appeared and, and they were just exactly right for, for roles that we, we needed to fill. And like, I don't know how long we'll be able to continue with that, but uh, for as long as we do, it's a fantastic way to recruit because it means you don't need to speak to recruitment consultants, which uh, is, is a great merit. Um, so I, I will wrap up, I promise. Um, so basically, like, we're opening three new spaces in the next three months. We're doing a month-long festival at the Barbican. We're doing our first refurbishment of a corporate office. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited that also Johan Brand, who should be in the room somewhere, joined us uh, just over a year ago with his, his business, We Are Human. That brought the link with Norway. Very exciting possibilities. And like, I really, really admire what all of you at Mesh are doing. And I, I think specifically in an economy like Norway's and in a region uh, like, like the Nordic region, the impact that you can make is 
greater than any other agency. You can engage every sector of this economy and society, and you can transform this society collectively and transform the region. And all I can say is, if you've done this in one year, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do over the next year. So <laughs> go get him. Thanks a lot for the kind words. Um, I think what you said about friendship and the importance of that, uh, that's, it's vital. And um, I'm grateful to have you as a friend now, and that creates good connections to London. So thanks a lot. Another applause for you.